Google can't stop it. YouTube can't stop it. Nobody is going to be able to stop what's going to happen in November. Just over the last 48 to 72 hours, there has been a massive shift being observed all across this country, and it's my considered belief that Donald Trump is going to win one of the most lopsided presidential races in history going away. There are states now that were never in play before that he's winning, and they're trying to keep it quiet. Florida Maquis, I can't believe what you said a few days ago that you're now switching your vote to Donald Trump. You weren't going to vote before. I mean, you weren't for sure going to ever vote for Kamala Harris or the Democrats based on all the gender nonsense and all the, the sodomite nonsense, but you couldn't get behind Donald Trump, but now you are. What's going on? Well, things are changing quickly. Things are changing very fast, and there's some information coming out now tied to this woman that I think a lot of you are going to want to see. And it has to do with these last two attempts on Mr. Trump and how we can tie them back to her. I'm sure a lot of people would be interested in that. Game of Thrones character, Peter Baelish, also known as Littlefinger, said, sometimes when I try to understand a person's motives, I play a little game in my mind. I assume the worst. What's the worst reason they could possibly have for saying what they've said and doing what they've done? Then I ask myself, how well does that reason explain what they've said and what they've done? Now, it's a little bit of word salad, I, I grant you, but to boil it down, the creator of that series, Game of Thrones, and a lot of other uh, medieval fantasy stuff, said that when you know what a man wants and you know who he is, and this goes for women too, I guess you could say, when you know what an individual wants and you know who they are, you know how to move him. You know how to move them. You know what gets them to do things. And I'm sure a lot of people are like, what would possibly motivate somebody to go to the lengths that this Ralph character did and the, the kid up in Pennsylvania? What, what would get somebody to that level? Well, once again, when you tear out a man's tongue, you are not proving him a liar. You're only telling the world that you fear what he might say. Now, this kind of ties into the reason we are at the Florida Maquis Alpha site right now. They have taken away my ability to speak over at the main proprietary channel where I have 128,000 subscribers. And they tried this before, so I created this little backup channel. We've got about 5,200 here just to be able to have some place to go in a foothold situation. That's why it's called the Alpha Site, the reference, of course, to Stargate. They gave me a strike for basically showing you a pile of plastic and paint. Wait, Florida Maquis, what do you mean a pile? Of, well, it was a pile of plastic and paint made to look like it was an individual that had um, been attacked by a zombie. Florida Maquis, they can take... It was an excuse. It was an excuse to cut out a man's tongue. Now, I'm sure a lot of people are like, okay, Florida Maquis, you're going to have to explain this. This seems like a lot to... to it's a battlefield of the mind. When you think about things logically and you put everything in order, it's all going to make sense. But you can't be in an emotional state because if you look at all this information that I've just shared in an emotional way, it won't seem like it's correlated. Now, if ever there was a time I could use your support, it's now. Because that main proprietary channel was, you know, main income driver had been for years. And when you put up videos every single day for seven straight years, and then all of a sudden you go a week and you're not allowed to publish anything, that causes a problem. So if you could, support over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel, one US dollar per month, that's it, lowest allowable level. Even less if you sign up for an entire year, fully refundable first 90 days. There's a one, a five, a 10, and a $15 level. Content for all. God bless all of you that have done that. Many of you have stepped up this last week. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. It is making a huge difference. How many of you remember, right after the election, back in 2020, I did two videos, one on the 7th and one on the 10th of November, talking about this thing going on in the Democrat Party called the moral imperative. 
It goes along with black and white thinking. It goes along with a whole lot of other things associated with the 24 cognitive biases, 24 logical fallacies that we talk about. Basically, when you decide, okay, I am in a black or white situation, I can either be A or I can be B. Whatever you decide, then, of course, what you decided to be against, they're 100% evil. You can then dehumanize them. You can depersonalize them. They're not real individuals. They're not worthy of anything. So then any action that follows that you do is justified. See, you talked about this recent announcement from Mr. Trump's wife that, you know, she's proud of her past, the thing they're trying to shame her for. Now, most people think, well, it's kind of a black or white thing, you know, if you want to be a model, that's fine. But keep your clothes on, that's fine. If you take your clothes off, that's always evil. If you keep your clothes on, that's always good. It's not ever really that case. But she came out and said, I don't really care what anybody else's opinion is. I'm proud of my past. See, that's quite a departure. That is quite a departure from America recently. And oh, by the way, we haven't heard a word from Ivanka Trump. And at this time, back in 2020, she was on a six-week tear where she raised... $35 million for her father at 30 different campaign stops. She even broke Barack Obama's um, record, fundraising record for that amount of time. It was an incredible thing to see. Now, here are the two videos. Um, hidden evidence is now, I'll give you the links down in the description. You'll be able to find them. But basically, that's the idea. Now, okay, great story, Maki, but how does this tie... How does this tie into this, this whole issue with, with Hillary? Well, you've heard her say over and over again that you need to a threat to democracy, threat to democracy, threat to democracy. You see, from their perspective, you know, they are on the good side of the line. Anyone who's not on the good side of the line is, well, what have we heard? The deplorables. You know, the 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 part of America that we need to flush away and we need to get away. You see. She uses this term democracy, and people assume it means U.S. democracy. That's not, that's not what they meant. Not what they meant at all. You see, there's a thing called world democracy, and that's what they see him as a threat to. And these guys, no matter how nuts, no matter how batshit, they're going to see them as heroes. Now, okay, Maki, I kind of understand that, but you brought up this thing with, with, with George R. R. Martin and and Peter Baelish. What is when you know what a man wants, and you know what motivates him, you, you know who he is, you know how to motivate him. How do they get people to do this? Well, when you give somebody this idea, like for example, in virtually every medieval fantasy game, whether it's World of Warcraft or whether they're watching it in Lord of Rings, The Rings of Power, that whole series that R.R. That R. Martin wrote, um, Game of Thrones, all this, there's a hero. There's a hero and he wants to fight against evil and all, all the other forces, they're going the, they're supposed good guys, they're going the other way. They're afraid the evil is too great. The evil is too great. So he sets off on a journey on his own. And along the way, he picks up a few few allies here and there, a very unlikely group of people. And they're going to go and, and they're going to fight, you know, for, for justice and for right. And of course, you know, there's this, this maiden back home that's, oh, don't do it. It's a hopeless cause. It's a hopeless cause. Just come be with me. I'm sorry. I must go. I must go now and I must go fight the great evil that is. And then, of course, we know how it all ends that, you know, there's a great battle of some kind and. Of course, the evil is vanquished, but of course, our hero also perishes in the whole thing. You see, this is how these people see themselves. This is a quote from Greta Thunberg. Democracy is the only solution to the climate crisis. You know, the new world religion. You see, this is the thing that explains it. They're not going after any other Republicans, are they? Only Donald Trump. Because they say they see him as a threat to their religion. 
What have they been talking about? With all of the different things that could have been talked about in a debate stage, the blah, 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 fracking, energy, fracking, energy, uh, the cost of energy is too high, and that, that's why inflation is so high, and that's why you can't afford eggs or bacon or anything. And, of course, you know, cackles over here. She's, you know, you know I, I promise I won't ban fracking. And, you know, they're just trying to get the votes of the people of Pennsylvania not giving a crap about anyone else. You see, that's what this is really about. That's what this is really about. How this ties to Hillary is simple. Hillary has convinced people, not that it's, you know, the idea of the Republican vision for this for America or that or this other thing. It's, this is a global deal. This is the whole climate agenda deal that we need to have this one party in charge in North America so that they can fit in with the rest of the world and go along with the one world agenda, the climate agenda. And anybody who stands in the way of those in the climate religion and their agenda is, of course, seen as a target of the moral imperative. They see themselves as heroes in some righteous fight for for good versus evil. They see themselves as heroes in some righteous fight of good versus evil. That's what this is going on with, with Crooks, with Roush, with and this guy on the on the right, by the way, we'll talk about him in another video. That'll be some homework for you. Screenshot it and look it up. Because this started a while back. But this is something that R.R. Martin got really well. That's why he sells, you know, so many books. That's why his stuff is so successful. Uh, the Game of Thrones was one of the single most watched series ever for its eight seasons. And because it told this same old story, just in a different way. You know, you have this this idea of a battle against all odds. I'm a hero, and even all the other good guys are too afraid to be really good guys. So I'm going to go stand alone and and stand up against you know evil and this very naivete kind of youthful pie in the sky, you know, dream world, you know, of, of dying for a great cause. And this, you know, when you look at the the rhetoric that comes from Thunberg and the global community, the global climate world religion community, and how they talk, that's the thing that, to my mind, and someone might disagree, to my mind, best explains the actions of these two individuals, is that they see themselves as they saw themselves as a couple kind of heroes. And and what was the what made them heroes? Well, they were get trying to get rid of the guy that was going to cause the planet to burst into flames. They were trying to get rid of the guy that they thought was going to cause the planet to burst into flames. That's all this is about. Now, I could make the allegation that he'll be in more danger once he's elected, but at this point, people have now seen this for what it is, and the reason that he's going to win and win going away is this whole psychology has gotten reversed. He is now seen as the one fighting against, the one going the other direction, it's the irony of all ironies. It's been seen now that this guy is now being perceived as, you know, that great hero that everybody has been been waiting for. While these guys wanted to be seen that way, this is how Trump is being perceived by most Americans. As the one who's, you know, going to go for the ultimate fight and he'll take out the bad guys but in the process they might take out him too 
this is the reality. A lot of people are probably rolling around like, oh, I hate those shows. They're so campy and so predictable. Yeah, but they are popular, aren't they? They are popular. So, once again, when you tear out a man's tongue, you are not proving him to be a liar. You are only telling the world that you fear what he might say. This is, of course, the character Tyrion Lannister, the imp from Game of Thrones. Very, very wise thing to have said because that was said right before all this, this crap happened with the censorship online that many of us are dealing with right now. So, once again, humbly, if you could join us, it's only a dollar. There's hundreds and hundreds of videos over there at the Florida Maki Patreon channel going all the way back to 2018 and 19, never before seen on YouTube. Huge library of videos. And you get it for a dollar a month. Little speed bump over there, a little pay-per-view speed bump because there are some graphic images. There are some images that, you know, you would probably need to be adult to be able to appreciate and understand their meaning and context. So would love to have you there. God bless. Thank you, everyone. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.